What's going on guys? Today I am going to install this engine onto a 2008 Ford Explorer. I'm going to give you some tips and tricks how to get the engine in and get it all set up easily. Let's get started. So right now what I'm doing is I'm finishing closing up the engine. I did a timing job. You see the new guide, tensioner, uh, cassette up here and cassette in the back. Everything's timed, ready to go. I got my timing cover over here. I got a new gasket. I'm going to put it together, put the exhaust manifolds on, and then we'll get the engine in. All right, guys. So the first tip I have for you is when you go to take your exhaust off when you're removing your engine, nine times out of ten, the nuts are just seized on. So I cut the studs off, and then when I have the exhaust manifolds off the car, I notch them like that, blast the stud out, and then I get a stainless steel threaded bolt with a lock washer and a nut on the bottom. That way, it's just easier to put new hardware in instead of reusing rusty hardware. And then when you do cut them off, you're usually left with a piece of stud hanging through those holes for your flange. You gotta take a grinder and you gotta cut them out. So now you have the holes. And as you're prepping your engine bay, you can paint your chassis, pressure wash, clean up, everything as much as you want. Now, you wanna get your transmission as level across as possible. You don't want it like tilted down up back you want to try to get it even that way the dowels line up on both sides and now what I do is I take a torque converter stud and I put it in the starter slot like as close as I can to the starter axis hole and then I take my flywheel and I turn the engine until the flywheel is around the same spot that way when I'm looking when I'm down in here and I'm looking I can line them up I get a flashlight and I'll be able to see that way I can adjust the engine and I don't have to stick my fingers in there and adjust the torque converter. I can take a ratchet and socket and turn the engine forward or backwards to try to get them lined up. Another thing you're going to want to do, like I said in the removal video, is leave your motor mounts off. Get them out of there. You do not want them on. You don't want to have to deal with clearing these studs. That's a nightmare. And then this thing too. Oh my goodness. Yeah, that's a big problem. So leave your motor mounts off. Back here, there's like a fuel line bracket thing. Get that out of there. You don't need it. It's clamped in down there. It's not going anywhere. Get that out of the way. That's just going to be kind of a little bit of a problem when you try to put bell housing bolts back in. It gets in your way. You can also take this time to put a little bit of anti-seize on your studs over here in your nut. You could put a little bit of anti-seize. Just anything to make your life a little bit easier if the engine ever has to come out again. Okay, so now with the transmission, the dowels line up in those holes right there, that one, and the one on the other side. What I like to do is take a little bit of grease, get just a little bit, just enough to say that you used some, and I go ahead and I put it in there. That way, when the dowels, the pins try to line up, they just kind of slide in instead of me having to use the bolts to pull the pins into the transmission. It'll help it just a little bit, just a little bit of lubrication. Now, as far as chaining the engine up to the hoist, I really, really, really recommend that you use a load leveler. Now, the way I do it is I use a bell housing bolt in the front, and then I use one of the bolts from the where the harness bolts to the back of the head in the back because the bell housing bolt doesn't have enough clearance against the firewall and you can get this one nice and tight in there no problem at all so for people who want to follow along i use the harbor freight load leveler you have your shackle here and then one two three on the third link i put a bell housing bolt right into that hole right there on the top of the head and then as far as the back side goes shackle one two three and i use the shorter bolt right on the back side of the head now at this time, go ahead and take your oil filter off. I noticed last time it didn't want to clear the motor mount. Now what I do is I just put a plastic bag with some tape. That way whatever oil is left in the pump doesn't leak out on the driveway. Now I think what Ford should do is make it even more confusing for us. That guy there, that is our torque converter stud hole. So what I'm going to do, draw a little line and make a little arrow. That way, when I'm friggin' underneath the car, I have no problem telling which one is the one that I have to get lined up.
All right, everybody, about 15 minutes later, I went ahead. I got the engine paired to the transmission. Now, I put one bolt in right there where the dowel goes, and I did the same thing on the other side, right over there. Now, don't forget about your shield, okay? Your spacer, shim, plate, shield, whatever you want to call it, goes in between the engine and the transmission. It, it sits on the dowels as it's going in, and it tends to fall. So always be careful with that spacer. You want to put the engine in very gently. You don't want to put the engine in rocking it back and forth just like a slow dance. Get it in there, right in, right up to the transmission. Now, like I said before, I usually line the studs up in the starter hole. Same thing with the flywheel and it worked perfectly. Look at that. Now I can put the uh, torque converter nuts on and we'll get everything finalized. But for right now, I got the motor mounts in. I left them out. Like I told you, I put the bolts in. I didn't bolt them down yet. Engine is still hanging a little bit. What I can do now, finally, we will let the engine down into its final resting position. Like so. And look at that. Studs line up perfect. Engines bolted to the transmission. Torque converter studs came through the flywheel perfectly. And it's all the nitty gritty from here. Okay, so now what you can do is finalize your engine mounts. What I'm gonna do is take a little bit of anti-seize, put it on these threads here, just in case something happens. It's always good. And then I'll come over here. I'll do the same thing right down here. In that nut there, put a little bit of anti-seize, just like that, perfect. Now we can get our long bolt, 18 millimeter, like so. Couldn't make it fish in from the front. So that's that. We'll get that in all the way, torque it down. We have these two 18 millimeter nuts. One there, one there. Honestly guys, I don't even know the torque specs on these. I just make them nice and tight. Um, I wouldn't worry too much about it. So these are 18 millimeters, same on the other side. Get your engine mounts done. That's one step closer. Okay, next step. Ratcheting breaker bar with a 19 millimeter and a regular ratchet with a 14 millimeter We're gonna do our torque converter nuts the way I do this is I stand in the engine bay right here I put my 19 millimeter on the crank I do one at a time get one nut on rotate the engine another one rotate the engine another one rotate and the last one and then we'll be good to go All right guys, so one of my least favorite parts of the project is now done. All of our torque converter nuts are finalized. Look at that pretty girl right there. Now, standing in the engine bay, we have perfect access to the top bolt for the starter. So I'm gonna throw that starter in now. It's a 13 millimeter bolt. Okay, got the starter in. Top bolt is in, just like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my load leveler out of the way and we can start plugging some stuff in. Now we can start laying these harnesses over the top. As you can see, this just kind of clicks in like that. Same goes for this back one. Now we can do our injectors. Cylinder three, click, cylinder two. Good, cylinder one, perfect. Click this around, snap it into place. We can go ahead and plug our knock sensor in, perfect. That's plugged in. Now what we can do is we can access the two top bell housing bolts by reaching behind here like this. And I used this 13 millimeter wrench to tighten them down. Okay, with our upper bell housing bolts tightened down, what I'm gonna do now is I plugged in this little oil pressure sensor right here. And then I'm gonna take the cable that goes for the alternator. We run it across like this and we'll leave it up and over here to the left for now. It goes like this and the power steering pump goes over it and the alternator bracket, it comes up like that. Then what I can start doing is working on the exhaust. I went to Home Depot and I got bolts. So I'm gonna put the exhaust manifolds on now. I got new gaskets and new nuts, as you can see here. 
Okay, so I got my first exhaust manifold on. Looks a little something like this. I got some new nuts, which is nice. The one stud that snapped, I extracted and put a bolt in there, and it fits great. So I'm gonna do the other side now. Okay, guys, so I got the other exhaust manifold bolted on. As you can see, look at that, pretty. Everything's good, torqued down. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use those long bolts I got from Home Depot. And you can see the little slice I cut. Use a washer, we're gonna go through that flange. I'm gonna bolt the exhaust down. Now, unfortunately, I'm waiting for an intake manifold gaskets and another valve cover gasket you know I'm not scummy where I'm gonna put an old valve cover gasket on after I did a brand new timing chain kit that's why this valve cover isn't on this one is because I had an extra passenger side one but in your case this valve cover would be already on okay so I officially got the exhaust all bolted up see bolt there bolt there and then two on the other side as well and I'm actually feeling really good because I haven't had to be under the car for anything so far. I was able to do everything from up top, which is great. So, with the exhaust done, motor mounts done, starter in, torque converter nuts bolted, and our top bell housing bolts on, I'm going to start focusing on, on some of the front dress. So, before I get my water pump on, what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in our crank sensor, like so. And then it uses that little clip that you have to push in from the bottom. Another great Ford design, can't be pushed in from the top. You have to do it from the bottom. It's kind of hard to see when you're standing up top. Like that, done. So we got that out of the way, push that tab on, follow this alternator harness, push that tab on. Now, with the fourth gen Explorers, they have the electronic fan clutch, so I couldn't get my wrench down in there, so I literally took the whole assembly off. So I can bolt it on now, and we'll get it done. So just like my water pump video, it's 89 inch pounds in a cross pattern. Okay, so with our water pump on, now I'm going to install the heater core hoses. They come, one goes here and then one goes to the thermostat housing. I didn't put that on yet. The one to the thermostat housing goes on the right heater core pipe. like that and then the one to the water pump goes on the left heater core pipe we're gonna mount this this one comes around pushes on and then there's a little bolt down here so for this one there's a 15 millimeter bolt here bolts right above the header I don't know why they need such a large bolt for such a little bracket beats me and then next to it over here is a 10 millimeter bolt so now we can mount our little heater core valve pipe it's a 13 millimeter bolt and while it's fresh on our mind we can go ahead and put these clamps back on that way we don't forget water pump clamp good and you let the jury know I suggest replacing these spring style clamps with the upgraded worm style clamps yes I know my arms are small now we can do our alternator bracket because everything else over here is pretty much done so reverse of removal the alternator bracket is just a series of three 15 millimeter bolts what I'm doing right now is just making sure our harness is up out of the way so before I forget and before things get too congested over here, I'm going to install my thermostat housing. It's three 8mm bolts. I'm reusing the housing, so I'm going to put a thin coat of water pump RTV right here on the mating surface. Okay, with our thermostat housing bolted down, go ahead and click in your coolant temp sensor and come down here and make sure your clamps are over the neck of the water pump and the outlet of the thermostat housing. All right, guys, so now I'm gonna put the alternator on and a little trick for you is before you bolt the alternator down, 
put your 12 volt positive on because Ford so thoughtfully put it on the back of the alternator instead of the front of it. So make sure you put this 12 volt lead on first. Okay, with our alternator in place, we can now go install our idler pulley and our belt tensioner pulley. Okay, so your belt tensioner pulley is a 13 millimeter bolt and your idler pulley is a 15 millimeter bolt. Okay, so at this point we can install our power steering pump. It's four 15 millimeter bolts. And just watch how I do it. You have to try to get the stud that's on the pump itself lined up with the AC compressor it's because the AC compressor bolts to it. Okay, so with your AC compressor slid onto that first stud, you can take your other two nut stud assemblies like so, and you can try to feed them in from up here. You might have to go through the driver's side wheel well. They can get one through like this. And then there are dowels on the side of the AC compressor. Line them up. Okay, so we now have the power steering pump finalized and our AC compressor bolted into place. I was able to reach all of them from up here. The next thing we can do is go ahead and take our high pressure line, which is this guy right here. And we are going to thread this in. It is an 18 millimeter. Okay, so with that 18 millimeter fitting connected, you can go ahead and take this little bracket that they have, swing it up like that. There's an eight millimeter bolt right there. And then for the high pressure switch, you can plug your harness in which is located right here. I'm gonna plug it in, just like that, done. Okay, so with that done, we can undo these 10 millimeter bolts. I just have them threaded in here so I didn't lose them. We'll put our power steering pulley on, and then the same way you take it off, you just stick a ratchet in there, we'll tighten them down. Okay, so with our power steering pulley on, basically all of our pulleys are here. What I'm gonna focus on doing now is getting the radiator and condenser in on the fourth gen explorers it's just two bolts one there and one there and the whole thing slides right in that way i can get this lower hose on before i start putting on the belt and things like that okay with our radiator in and our condenser in you can go ahead and hook up the 13 millimeter nut, this line over here for the condenser. I have a leak in my system, it was all leaked out, and it's actually a good opportunity for me to be able to test the leak now. Now we can take our lower radiator hose, slip it up and over the water pump, like so, and this clamp doesn't look good, so I'm gonna go in my garage and see if I have a worm gear clamp, and if I do, I'm gonna throw it on. So with our lower radiator hose clamped down, I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna put my belt on now. Okay, so now that I have my belt run, I'll just show you real quick. For those people who wanna know the belt schematic, it goes around the water pump, then down around the crank, up over the tensioner, up over the alternator, under the idler, just like that. I'm gonna put my fan on. Now I just have the blades and it's a series of 10 millimeter bolts. You have to spin it and you have to reach in from this way Okay, so with our fan on, I'm going to come over here now and I'm going to take the return line of the power steering pump and I'm going to put it there and just slide the clamp over it. So we can now take our electronic clutch fan harness, plug it in, it snaps in there, and then as far as the mounting goes for it, it mounts where the coil pack goes as well. So you have your two coil pack holes. I'll show you 
This mounts just like that. We can go ahead, come back here. I have this rag covering our fuel line just to be safe. And we can go ahead and it just snaps right in. Like that, you hear that click. And then this little safety clip comes over the top. All right, so now we can get our upper shroud in. It's two 10 millimeter bolts, one on this side and one on the other side right there. And then this little groove on the bottom of the power steering reservoir, there's a little groove there. They meet up like that. And then there's a bolt that goes in here, which is an eight millimeter. With that done, we can go ahead and install our coolant overflow tank. It sits like this. You meet these up like that, one there. And then this hose simply just slides right on to the radiator. We can now simply install our reservoir by tightening these two 10 millimeter bolts. I'm now gonna install the upper radiator hose. If you look carefully, it says engine and radiator. Makes it nice and easy for you. Slide it over the thermostat housing and get the other end up over the radiator. Just like that. I'm now going to install my air box. You line up those two and those two as you can see, there's one, two, three, four, right there. Line them up, push down. So I finally got my set of valve cover gaskets and my intake manifold gaskets and my grommets and all sorts of good stuff. And now we can continue putting the intake on, the valve cover on, and everything up top. So we just have a series of eight millimeter bolts, torque them to 89 inch pounds. With our valve cover bolted down, we can take this harness, push it over that stud like that, plug in our PCV valve, click. Now we can lay the harness over the top, like so. Start plugging in our injectors, six. This plugs into the fuel pressure sensor. This is for our coil pack. We can now come around, do something like that, and we can plug in our electronic fan clutch. This uses that special clip. I'm gonna pry off the clip with a flat screwdriver. Now at this time, before you put your intake manifold on, you're gonna wanna lay your vacuum hoses over the top of it. Now it sits like this. This plugs right into the fuel rail. And then this comes from underneath and it plugs into the intake manifold. This comes around back, plugs into your EGR vacuum port thing and then this goes to your cabin air. We can now go ahead and install our intake manifold. Place it over but be mindful of clearing the fuel rails as you do so. We're going to torque down our intake manifold using a T30 with a 6 inch extension and a 3 8 ratchet. It's about 14 foot pounds of torque. Just tighten them down in a cross pattern. Be careful not to strip the heads out. With our intake tightened down, we can go ahead, come back here and install our PCV valve. Then we can come over here. This vacuum line connects to that port. And then for your brake master cylinder, spin that around and it slips over just like that. Now we can come back here. We can plug in that vacuum line to the back of this EGR. Then we can plug in our EGR, like that, good. Now before I put my throttle body on, while I have access with the EGR, I'm going to install my EGR tube. Now I know what you guys are saying, oh my god, look at him, he cut the tube. Now, hear me out on this. Online, they sell these adapters, it's exhaust adapters. They slip over that, it's got two clamps, and there's no leaks whatsoever. I will leave the link in the description to the things I buy. It makes it so easy just to cut it and get it out of your way. Because when you bend it, it puts a crease in a pipe, and then when you go to bend it back, it just it won't line up. So you can line it up, thread it in, and then put your clamp on, and you'll be good as new. Back here, we can go ahead and get our vacuum line. I think this has to do with emissions. Once I take it off, I can never get it back on perfectly. There we go. Done. 
So with that done, we can now go ahead and install our coil plaque and our six plug wires. Now, this harness back here, it's a big one like that. That plugs right into the back of the coil pack. And now the guy before me lost all the seven millimeter bolts, but there's four of them, two there, two here. And this diode here um, reduces frequencies in your radio from engine stuff running. That bolts there like that. So as I'm putting some of the other stuff together, I'm gonna go ahead and let the oil drain. I'm gonna give it an hour, try to get as much out as I can. We can now go ahead and install our throttle body. Don't forget about your throttle body gasket. It's four eight millimeter bolts. With your throttle body on, you can plug in your TPS and you can also plug in your throttle body motor like so click it in and then you push in this red tab. Now we can go ahead and install our air box with a nice new air filter, plug in our mass airflow sensor, push our red clip in, and we'll install our snorkel now with this one vacuum line, two eight millimeter worm gear clamps. Okay, so with our air box on and with a filter installed, we can go ahead, fill up our radiator with antifreeze and distilled water. We can fill our crankcase with five quarts of oil, put our oil filter on, fill our power steering reservoir. I gotta go underneath still and I have to put that last starter bolt in and the two bottom bell housing bolts in. And uh, I'm letting the battery charge up a little bit and we're gonna see if this thing fires up. So before I start this thing up, I'm gonna put my foot to the floor, the throttle pedal, put it all the way to the floor. That cuts off spark. And then I'm gonna crank it. 10 seconds on, let the starter rest. 10 seconds on, let the starter rest. 10 seconds on, and then I'm gonna fire up. That way it oil pump primes, we'll get some oil throughout the engine, get it into our tensioners before we let it fire for the first time. And you have no idea how nervous I am right now. Every time I put an engine in, I get so nervous that it's not gonna run or light on fire or something stupid like that. So we'll see what happens, that's for sure. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I'm so happy. Wow. Oh my God. Okay. All right, it's got that new engine smell. Let's shut that off real quick. Something definitely stinks to high hell. But you know what? It friggin' runs. It's gonna be burning off a lot of oil and a lot of gunk for a little bit. But you know what? Now I can make sure my coolant's topped off, fill up my power steering fluid. And if you could tell, I am so excited right now. Oh my lord, it friggin' runs. All right, everybody, so the temperature is good. It's not overheating. And if we come around, listen to this. How nice and quiet is that? Beautiful. So once in a while, always remember, check your temperature, adjust power steering if needed keep an eye on the oil level make sure there's no leaks and as far as this goes I think this is a job well done so thank you all for watching if you guys enjoyed this video leave a like if you didn't leave a dislike and consider subscribing thanks